This is George Massenburg's studio. With thousands of wood sticks in the wall, no other audio studio looks like this. Inspired in those walls, I created a random acoustic diffuser. It is really light and it enhances the room acoustics. This is the complete process for building it. Are you ready? Let's go! Hello and welcome to this video. These are the materials you are going to need. They are basic and you should have no problems getting them. So why using cork? Well, I'm from Porto, Portugal. This is the land of port wine and we use wine and cork for centuries in this country. So I was inspired in that and it is a nice material, light and it has great acoustic properties. You can do this in two different ways, one cheap and one more expensive. The cheap is to go to a local restaurant and ask them to keep the cork from the wine bottles for you and then you collect them and you get them for free. The expensive is to buy new pieces of cork, they are unbranded and they are all the same size and width. First thing is to give them a good wash. I did separate them in two buckets to get them really clean and I did turn the red side in, down in the water. You use any way to keep them underwater because they want to stay afloat. I left them one afternoon outside in the sun to dry and you start the tedious part of selecting the same pieces from different brands. This is a cheap method, but you have to work something on it. By being from different brands, they have different sizes, shapes and different types of cork and color. You start by selecting the good sides, usually they have a good and a bad side, and you glue the bad sides together. So you hide them and you keep it nice looking. This is also a good way of recycling existing materials and fighting waste on this planet. Usually I glue in groups of two, but sometimes I can do in groups of three also. You always select the bad sides. If you have a red side from the wine, you select that one and you glue them together. In the end, you always have a nice looking bunch to work. As you can see, you will need a lot of cork to finish this process. So, one bunch done and we clean the board to start again. They seem a lot, but then you start gluing groups of two to make a group of four and they disappear quickly. By working with new pieces of cork, work is much easier because they are the same size and width. Here you can see the new bits versus the worst used bits I had. And again, you glue the worst sides together. Even being new, they have a good and a bad side, usually. So you select it, apply some pressure for 2 or 3 seconds and done. In total, all new pieces of cork in this process cost me about 50 euros. Remember, used pieces, you can get them for free. Working with new pieces is also much faster, because they are consistent. You always allow 2 or 3 hours for proper uh, drying, then it's very difficult to separate them. Of course you can do it, but you will damage them. Notice that I already had these pieces of cork and they are more yellowish than the new ones I'm going to get later. Be aware if you have cats, because they like to throw the pieces of cork down. They also like to lie down on the board, so you are advised. Cork is a flexible material, so you can repair it quite easily. In this case, these two pieces are not straight enough, so you apply new glue on the other side and you apply some force. You may use some clamps to do this. 
another case is for bottle opener repair you can use your fingernails to repair this quite easily and another great trick is on stubborn pieces you glue them horizontally and not vertically be aware and remember that you have to leave the glue on the top side otherwise you will glue them to the board this is one of the lots that i did groups of one two three and four pieces You can even use this to make a sci-fi movie. And after all this work, finally we can start populating the panel. I'm using the uh, simple materials I've shown you in the beginning of the video. I'm using those two sticks to create a separation. I do not want the cork pieces right in the extremity of the board. I don't like to use a high number of pieces in the beginning or in the corners of the board because if you want to bolt it onto a wall you will find difficult to work. Here there's no secret, you keep it being uh, random. Usually I don't use the same number of pieces together, sometimes I do of course. And here I want a less dense side with cork so I have lots of space between them and on the other side I want to create a more dense side and also higher I mean on the other side I have pieces with lower numbers here I want more pieces with higher numbers and I'm using new cork I just bought notice that it has a different color as I mentioned it will get yellow alongside with time the process is always the same, you select the bad sides and you glue them together. One night drying out and done. Well, almost. You always find imperfections and some pieces that are not very straight. So the way to correct it is to glue two pieces together, like this. And even new pieces will need correction. You use a toothpick to control the glue. So finally work is done. Well, not so much because I want to glue these four pieces together. I am never happy with the result. And on the next day you can remove all the rubber elastics and done well again i'm going to repair that one and now yes i'm happy with the result and i decided to wait this so i do not shoot you a random number the final weight is 5.2 kilos And this is the final result, a piece full of character that will enhance the room acoustics by scattering sound waves. Cork is a funky material as it both absorbs and reflects sound, so it is used in construction as a isolation material. In this case I'm using it as a diffuser, I am not pretending that this is the best idea ever or this has better results than any other diffuser. This was just my idea and this is the process on how to build it. Now it's time to make a sci-fi movie. I have built several panels, most of them are bolted directly onto the wall. I decided that this one would be hanged on the wall so I could keep it angled towards down. 
I have another one that is here shown on the right that is placed with hinges so I can angle it whenever I want. And there you go, finished. One final suggestion is to frame it and to use a LED strip light to the inside or outside. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, give it a like, comment if you have something to say or ask, and subscribe for more videos like this. I see you in the next video. Take care.